Hi, and welcome back to a new season of Knights HQ Podcast brought to you by Maxwell Recruitment and Training, highly skilled labour hire and real world training from engineering trades, construction to office administration. Season three. I'm Jay Nelson. With me, as always, the man from Nabiak. <laughs> Matt Croaks. I love how you always throw the Nabiak in there just well, for a little bit of a laugh. Dude, it's not a laugh. Nah, it's good. You gotta you it's gotta, good. you know, tip of the cap of where you're from. I haven't you know? been there for a while. I haven't I haven't lived there for what, seven or so years. Have but you lost touch with the common man? No, not you're at all. I love I love heading back there to the to the farm, as does our guest. But um how are you, Jay? Just quickly. I'm very well. Season's just around the corner. Yes, trials this weekend. Yep. Then another trial, then we're on. So as a, as a massive close. Knights fan, you you're pretty oh, excited. Mate. Best time of the year. Yeah, it's so everyone's good, eh? at zero zero. Yeah, the you, hope is there. You can almost it's our year. Let's go. You feel the buzz around the town, don't you? Like in a way, like one hundred percent. People start asking you about. Oh, are you excited? Because during preseason, such a grind. You know what I mean. And but then once the season starts coming around, you go. Oh, this is yeah. this is starting to get special, well, isn't it? Well, one hundred percent. And for us, like being on the media team. Yeah. You know, you slowly put out things that you guys have been doing in the preseason. Slowly, yeah. slowly, everyone starts to build up. And yeah, you, you start feel showing more it. footage, and everyone's just ready to go. So no, it's uh, it's very much look, footy's back, and it's it's beautiful. Well, listen, without further ado, I'll introduce introduce our great guest today, and it's one of my really good mates who I've become pretty close with over the last couple of months. It is Adam Elliott. How are hey, you, mate? I'm great, brother. You going on? Thanks for having me on here, guys. Oh, what's, no worries what's at been all, man. No, just been grinding, like you said, preseason. It's getting to that time of the year that everyone's starting to get pretty excited i'm trying i'm trying to keep a lid on it but <laughs> pretty pumped, obviously um it'll be my first game for the night so i've been in rehab for a fair bit of the preseason. now now i'm back out there with the boys it's like it's starting to feel really cool and starting to develop some on-field uh i suppose relationships started started early on you know like you just said then mate man you were pretty close and i've got yep. a few good mates in this in this team already but it's about that on-field chemistry now yeah. which really excites me can i ask a question like when you come into a new club it must be pretty daunting and this this is sort of just a out of the blue question but you've been in rehab for majority of it is it tough coming in and feeling like you're sort of not on the field with the boys in a way like because you're so much in rehab and for those who don't know when you're in rehab you're you barely train with the team in the sense of you've got to do your own specific training. How, how's that when you want to try and build this connection with a new club? What's that like? Yeah, you're right. It's it's quite isolated unless you've you know got a lot of boys injured, which is not a situation that your club wants to be in. Usually you're in there with only two or three of you. So yeah. I think I was really lucky when I first got here. It was probably second day that we went on that camp. Yeah, exactly. The TLT camp. Um, everyone's probably seen some footage of that and um, – you know, you can see how hard it was and how collectively everyone had to, like, you know, get down and dirty and link arms and get close. And I think for me that was the best way to be introduced to everyone and introduced to the club, the coaches as well. So I went straight from, you know, thinking I was probably going to be on my own for a fair chunk of time to go into that. So it was a really easy way for me to, you know, f- feel my way into the team and, and get to know everyone sort of in an accelerated way. And yeah. um, that's probably made rehab be... A little bit easier. Probably didn't make the rehab easier. I think it probably knocked me back a couple of weeks from <laughs> <laughs> the army camp, but yeah. <laughs> um, it definitely helped me with yeah getting to know everyone. Because like you said, mate, it is, it is quite daunting. Like yep. yeah. I'm 28 now, but you still feel like that 13 year old kid going into your first day of year seven. Yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's exciting, but it's nerve wracking at the same time. So I think not being able to dip the toe and just having to dive right in into that camp was probably something that helped me um, yeah. know, get to know everyone. Pretty just quickly. on that footage before you jump yeah. in, Jay. Congrats, mate. To oh. you and the whole media team, it was unbelievable. If anyone hasn't seen the, the first episode of Level Up, I believe it's season three, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. third season. Go yeah. watch that. Um, there's more episodes coming. It was pretty impressive what you did. And we got a full showcasing the other week. Um, and it's pretty cool to see what you did on uh, during preseason, put into a little bit of a movie. So yeah. thanks for that, mate. It was really good. Oh, no worries. Oh, you boys do all the work. I'm just, <laughs> oh, no, I'm just no. the guy standing there with the camera <laughs> feeling really bad watching you guys go through it all. Um, and yeah, like going off what Adam said before, like, he literally walked in, shook people's hands for the first time, and then we're on the plane. Yeah, <laughs> so it was like, off we go. Now, look, we normally start our uh, our podcast, especially with a new guest like yourself and being new at the club, with a little player quiz. A little walk down memory lane to see how much you know about your own career. Now, because we have the answers and you don't, I'm trying to hide my sheets so you don't <laughs> yeah. see what's going on. But we're going to start with your debut, which is kind of what we do around here. Mm-hmm. You made yours at round one of 2016. Yep. Off the bench for the dogs. Yep. What ground was that game played at? And for a bonus point, who captained that team? 
That was uh, Brookvale, Manly. Ding, ding. Yep. Ding, ding. We got the win. I think uh, I'll, I'll go a double bar at this point. I think it might have been 44 16 or something, the final score. Jimmy can Jimmy, pull that up. Yep. Um, and captain was James Graham. Correct. Bang, Good bang. start. It usually starts easy, Toots, so don't um, do not I don't know. Easy. I reckon at the start when he was like, look, I don't know how I'm going to go, <laughs> and then he's going to ace it. I reckon that bit was of bluff, a bit of false eh? modesty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, technically you're three from three. Oh, well. Three from three pending what did you say on the, the score? score. I said 44-16. We're at 28-6 here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, must be another time we went over there and flogged them. <laughs> All right, Toots. Um, Still a good win. You've kicked, <laughs> you've kicked two goals out of the seven during your career. They both came in the same game. Do you remember who it was against? Was it against Newcastle Knights? No. Bum, bum. <sighs> it was against the Gold Coast Titans in round 25, 2017. Yeah. You kicked two from five that day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I reckon <laughs> I kicked two more against the Knights and missed them both. Yeah, you would have. Well, there's your two from seven. <laughs> well, it's funny that, that we put that in because we did Game Changer with Mill last week. And remember, you were kicking the goals. Oh, both mate. Years. You've kicked one from you kick it from forty. Is that yes. where you hit yeah. it from? Forty. Topo. 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 Just let me run. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. And you're like, I probably oh, should have kicked, kicked a little bit of my career. Should have <laughs> <toe> <laughs> him that day. Yeah. Maybe he's got rank groins too, so he just come <laughs> in from straight leg. We um just to, just to elaborate a little bit on that. We um were struggling a lot that year for goal kickers. Yeah. And um they they'd put Foz just above me here in forum, my great mate yeah. in the pecking order. And he's got one turning out black dot, kicked it under the goal. Oh, I've seen the, that clip. Under yeah. the crossbar. So then at, straight after that, they've gone, yeah, ads like, because I've got a big boot on me. It's not that accurate, but I've got a yeah. big kick on me. Yeah. Sweet. So anything anything that we score outside the scrum lines, ads he's having a crack. Yeah. So I think my first two were from the sideline. <laughs> oh, tough start. Absolutely bricking it. <laughs> and I, uh, obviously fluked to get a couple over. <laughs> I can confirm that game was against the Knights. Yeah. No from two. Oh. Boot. Good work, Toots. Good no, work, mate. Oh, from two. Yeah, I only remember because I, I was getting sprayed at <laughs> Jones. <laughs> Wouldn't be well, like hopefully that. that'll change now this year. Yeah. Um, now, mate, uh, you represented the Indigenous All-Stars against the Maori All-Stars in uh, 2019. How many current Knights players played on the Maori team in that game? Oh, I'm trying to think if Gags was in that side then. I'll give you that one Gags was yep, in there Yep Okay so Gags That was the first year He'd played for the Multi All Stars um, Current Knights players I'm just going to say one. Oh, Two You got Gags correct Kalen Oh KP yeah. played yeah, yeah Wow Yeah okay. I'm pretty sure Gags has played for both sides I think that was the f- Actually was I remember the first seeing first year It was Multis as well I reckon it yeah. would have been Yeah so That's why KP played and, Yeah you know, It was yeah. a pretty big buzz Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah I'm pretty sure Because Gags has represented Both sides Yeah he has hasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah he has And he sort of said After that one he, That was going to be it Yeah um, You know he'd tick Both sides of the family off Which is yeah. pretty stuck Because I think he gets awesome. it From both his, both his mother And his father And then after that He said I don't want to Pick between them. He yeah. said, "I've represented them both, and that will do me." That's yeah. why he does. How's it, the man. representative career on Gags? <laughs> oh my! Jeez, eight hundred <laughs> Origin <laughs> matches, <laughs> <laughs> eight thousand Origin tries. Yeah. Remember that year, like we're we're New South Welshmen, the yeah. three of us, and he oh. was just carving us up, getting Wally Lewis medals right. and stuff like that. He could yeah. not, he could not help himself but score a double. Like in every when game. Gags came to the club, right? So here's a story for you. Mm. I was doing a little bit with Alex McKinnon. When he was here at the club. Yep, and um. He's really good friends with Gags, obviously. Yep. And I was like, oh, what's he like, you know, before? Because all I've known of Gags is every time we played him, he'd win pretty much, you know, just misery. Yeah. Mate, he's the best bloke ever. He's the best bloke you'll ever meet. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Gags gets here, 100%. Hadn't met him before. Hey, mate, how you going? I'm Dane. If you ever need anything, let me know. Like, just so lovely, so personable. But that was the thing that I hated because I was like, I want to not like you. Yeah. You've, <laughs> You're a Queensland. You've smashed my teams yeah. for as long as I can think. And I just, nah, he's, just, he's the best bloke. He's a great. Shout man. out to Gags. Yeah. One of the greats. Um, all right, mate. You, uh, I'll give you half a point for that. I'm not even keeping score. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, how many more games do you need until you'll reach your 150th in the NRL? 24. Oh, oh t- t- 25. Ah, yeah, <laughs> That's right. not a bad guess. That's, that was yeah, pretty, pretty good. good. That was pretty good, mate. And, mate, you're one from one in the finals winning of your first finals game with the Raiders. Oh, sorry. You're one from one in the finals winning your first finals game with the Raiders in an elimination semi final against the Storm last season. Yes. How many points were scored in total during that oh. game? 
You're pretty smart 30. man, Torts. Close, 48. Raiders 28, Storm 20. Yeah, right. I thought it was 16 14. You guys, in the man. Last round, I think yeah. we played them. We the played Raiders always did well down there. Round, yeah. And it was a f- proper grind. Um, James Schiller scored that gun try on the right edge. Grubbed. Grubbed, ran around, ran around him. Back in and, yeah. yeah. Actually, I'm going to bring something up Yo. while we're here. This man scored his debut NRL try a- last year a- against the Raiders yeah. Yeah, at yeah, GIA yeah. Stadium. Yeah. Did you play that day? Yeah, I did play that. That day, was yeah. when we lost on the Hooter. It yeah. wasn't great, but that's all right. They got us back to back last year with pretty. Pretty late. Like we played in two very good games against each yeah, other. We One did. down there at GRI was pretty tough. I think you guys were up. Maybe you guys were up two tries or something. Yeah. And we sort of clawed our way back in. There was one and one try that they disallowed because with Nars Eddie Lee, it yeah. glanced off his hand and yeah. they called a knock on, and yeah. Eddie picked it up. Yeah. Yeah. That was probably a turning point. It was, it was massive. And then and then there was obviously the heartbreak of last year. We had a couple of debutants. Frizz pulled out. In the warm up last year yeah. at um, Mac Oren. Jones, yeah, and then Oren debuted. Chris Marpapalungi was debuting, yeah, and yeah, that and, mining round, and, and, mining and round. the big fella yeah, here puts yeah. um, Josh Papali for it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Papa, sorry, yeah. I was, yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was <laughs> welcome to the yeah, NRL. Big boy. <laughs> 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 oh, well, you did all right, you did, did yeah, you, I didn't, did, did you go better than you think? Nah, I thought I'd go, we're giving you 50 percent from five. Average. No, no, no. You would have got a couple. Nah, two, let's go two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half. I'll yeah. give you three, Toots, because you're a good mate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, Toots, I've got a question to ask. We're just going to um, just talk general here. Yeah. We spoke about the TLT camp before, and like we said, it was your second day training with the club. Um, those kind of camps bring out a lot of leadership in a bloke and a lot of strong qualities, and everyone turned to you when, um, when there was a sign of leadership needed. Have you always sort of had that a part of your, your personality? Or have you sort of something to grow, you've grown with throughout your career? Yeah, I think it's something I've always loved and like felt felt as though from a young age it was something that I always thrived in. Like yep. always, always played plenty of sport growing up, whether it was like cricket or rugby league and um, always liked to be that one. I, th- I think that would sort of, particularly in rugby league, would just you know, be brave and just sort yep. of be the, the head of the snake. And yep. luckily... Um, played a few pretty good rep sides, you know, as a young fellow, you come from a tiny place, Tartra down near Bega, and we're playing against like Sydney West to make the New South Wales primary school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these, yeah. these, some of these boys are as big as I am now. Yeah. And I think those were probably my earliest memories of being like, I'm not really scared of these fellas. Yeah. And I could see that, you know, the other young country boys that were like physically a lot out of our depth jumped on the back of that. And I yeah. was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Like, I'm, I'm throwing myself into this and, and people are following me. And I reckon that was probably the first time I realised, like, oh, that was leadership. Yep. That was like, you know, I think I got picked as captain in that next team and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I think this is something that I'd love to do. And then probably, you know, from my earliest days in the NRL, I've always had the ambition of being an NRL captain and being yep. like a club captain and I'm a really proud person as you guys you know know and um, being able to be sort of that person at your club that people look to is something that I've, I've always thought would be such an honour um, you know I'm lucky enough to, to be in the leadership group here and, and have some really good leaders beside me and in front of me um, that you know I, I really do think is an honour um, and I, I reckon something that I probably learn along the way especially when I was young and coming through at the Bulldogs and playing with some pretty senior blokes, Josh Jackson, James Graham, Josh Reynolds, some pretty strong personalities was I had to be a leader without being the voice Yep. when I was a young fella because, you know, you've played five NRL games. Like when the pressure comes and, you know, you get put in some pretty high-pressure situations, you're behind the post, the game could be in the balance – automatically people don't really listen. They switch off a bit when the 20-year-old or 21-year-old's yeah. talking. And I wasn't used to that. I was always used to, even I think from under-20s, I didn't really play my second year of under-20s. I was the captain of the reserve grade team at the Bulldogs. So yeah. I was the captain of like blokes that had played 100 NRL games. I was 33 years old. So I had to be a voice then. And then when yeah. I come into the NRL squad, I had to learn to be, to support the leaders and maybe lead by action more so than yeah. by voice. And it was something that I suppose... You know, now I'm transitioning back into that stage where players do look to me for a bit of advice or, or to talk when there's a bit of silence. And yeah, I suppose it's um, a bit of a learning I've picked up along the way. Yep. Yeah, no, I mean, 
going off what Craig said, like, especially we're on the camp, like I hadn't really dealt much with you um, until you come here. Obviously haven't seen you on the field yet, um, in person that is, but just with the camp, it was like anything that you were involved in, it was like loud and this is what we're doing and this is where we're going. Even to the point where like, you know, the last day we'll run up that, that hill there in Brisbane City. Yeah, yeah, and Each yeah. team had to run up the hill. Yeah. So you couldn't run because of your injury, obviously, but you were just there next to the boys just yelling in their ear, come on, get up the hill, let's go, let's go, come on, Jace, blah, blah, blah. It's like you didn't have to do that. You could have just stood up the top of the hill and waited for him to go and then off you go. But you took it upon yourself to do that. So, you know, it really does show, like, you know, it's just something that I feel like, you know, it's just part of your personality, you know, to get around the boys and make sure, you know, we're going where we need to be going, which is, you know, great. Yeah, cool. Um, let's talk about the Knights. What was your decision about coming here? You know, what was the thing that got you across the line? What was, you know, obviously there's a lot of things that go into a decision to change club. Um, you know, we, you know, Crokes and I were a bit biased. We love it here, you know. This is yeah. the best place on earth. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, that, what, what was it for you that, that sort of wanted you to come here and, and be part of the club? Yeah, um, not many people know this, but I actually called Adam O'Brien the year prior um, to see if there was a spot in the top 30. Yeah, well, so. As a, as a young fella, I think I had the chance to come up here maybe when I was 23 and decided to stay in Sydney, was a bit one-eyed and just, you know, probably got in my own way a little bit with those decisions I made when I was younger. But, um, yeah, called ads and he, they just – it was too late in the year. We didn't have room in the cap here. Um, obviously spent my year down in Canberra, which I absolutely loved. Um, but then the opportunity to come back up and, and ads called me again and – uh, Millie was obviously here and uh, I was following her journey pretty closely and, and coming up and visiting her quite a fair bit as well and I always knew that Newcastle was somewhere that I'd be able to call home post footy so I suppose from a lifestyle point of view um, which is it's hard because I've always tried to avoid making lifestyle decisions when it comes to footy because yep. Our career is so short mm. you, can, you know you can spend the rest of your life where you want to live but it's it's about being happy on the field and being happy in, in an environment that you think you can thrive in. So, um, you know, that was something that was always going to be a bonus but never something that I based my decision around. Um, a big part of my decision was the coach and speaking to him and the way that he discussed he wanted me to play. Um, you know, I had to probably take a bit of a backward seat down in Canberra and not, not saying that I didn't enjoy my time down there at all. I absolutely loved it and played with some amazing players um, especially in our middle middle pack down there, Josh Papali'i and Joe Tuppany. Um, I learned a lot off those boys, but I felt as though I was always going to be third fiddle down there. And, um, you know, coming here, we got the Safiti twins, Frizz, Croaks, these blokes that I could really resonate with and think this is a forward pack that we could really make, you know, something to be reckoned with. And um, I've got a chance here to maybe be at the forefront and, and lead it a bit and speaking of ads he, he sort of said that was where he saw me you know if I did come here and um, I think that's what it came down to the fact that coming here I knew that I could really take up a leadership role like we just spoke about um, the forward pack was great I felt like I could add to that and I feel like we'll win a lot of games this year just off the back of our forward pack so I think uh, once it all lined up and um, you know Mill was here and she was going to be stoked um I knew a few of the boys and, and the coaching staff were so supportive of me coming here. It was quite an easy decision. It's, it's pretty crazy how, and obviously, you know, we don't want to keep on going with this because it's, you know, y your personal life, but having two players, you know, Millie and yourself, Millie's in NRLW, you're in the NRL, for all that to line up, contracts, years, where you are in your career, fit yeah. in the team culturally, for Le you guys to both, yeah, leadership, yeah. like all that has a line so now you're both playing for the one club and you get to live in the same spot that must be that must be awesome for that yeah, all just come together have, it couldn't have worked out better honestly yeah. the way that the club embraced mill and the the town embraced mill um i was like F i want that yeah. and for us to be able to do it together side by side and bounce things off each other and um you know go through the journey together mm. it's pretty sick yeah and just seeing how invested the boys are in her success as much as we are in, in the NRL space. The boys want the NRLW team to go well too. So I know that, you know, we're both going to be pushing each other and, and doing our best to, you know, get some results for the Knights, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Craig, it was, sorry, Craig, it was pretty funny. So 
obviously uh, Millie and Adam are now engaged. Yeah, 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 yeah. Adam reached out to me via Instagram yeah, yeah, to yeah. go, hey, man, I want to get some photos taken when I propose to Millie. Now, this is before he got to the club. Yeah. So he must have been keeping an eye on like the social media and all that sort of stuff for the for the girls. I'm like, oh man, like that'd be fantastic. Yeah, one hundred percent. So we were DMing each other back and forth, but we couldn't say anything because it was all a surprise. Yeah. So when the girls won the comp, oh. Ads is in the crowd <laughs> and I walk up to him and he's like, Yeah, man, we're like broing down and all this stuff. And they're looking at us like they've never met before. Why are they so close? And we just had to pretend like, oh no, he's just a really good bloke and this is just <laughs> fun and we're just so happy that they won and blah, blah, blah. Just like, you know, with probably the worst lies. They we'd probably thought so. for months. Yeah, we'd be like Oh, no, we just clicked like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't know each other. Yeah, for sure. On a side note, congrats <laughs> on that, Toots, mate. You yeah, excited? mate. Well done. Yeah, pumped. Yeah, yeah. yeah really happy. Whole family stoked. Um, yeah, we're, we're in a pretty good spot in our lives, man, yeah. Mill, so... We spoke, we spoke about this the other day. Is it stressful at the moment or has Mill just taken all that on board? Yeah, I'm probably more of the stress head in, in Oh, really? Out of the two? Mate. She's so relaxed, like, even just timing, leaving the house and all that sort of stuff. It's just, I think that's why she's such a good footy player. Handles pressure so easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She doesn't put much on herself. Yeah. So, she's been pretty cruisy. I think we got a venue locked in the other day, so we're pretty excited. It'll be this off-season, so that's pretty cool. Gun. Good on you, mate. Uh, so we'll just get back to, uh, we are talking more about the club there before, but let's talk about the city in itself in Newcastle. And look, you're a bit of a beachy sort of bloke. You like your camping, you like your, your fishing, stuff like that. How, do you, how have you enjoyed Newcastle, the city on its own? Like I said, I didn't want to base my career decision around lifestyle. And I, it was so hard for me because I couldn't picture living in a better place. Yeah, it, Newcastle's like everything from the age of five that I've ever wanted. Grew up in Tarthra, a really coasty sort of yep. beachy town, but population of 1,500, no shops, no, I suppose, future there for, for a career outside of being a school teacher or a tradie. Yep. Um, you know, there's small businesses, but it's really competitive there because there's yeah. obviously not, small the, not many people yeah, yeah, down there. Um, so as for like being a sporting sporting athlete, I knew I'd have to get out of there and to be able to do that in Newey, mate, I'm just so lucky. Like you said, I love love surfing, camping and fishing and there probably hasn't been a day where the sun's been shining that me and Mill haven't gone for a swim at the yeah, beach. Yeah. And, you know, I'm catching up with the boys all the time down there getting coffees and we're just always outside and honestly, it sounds cliche, we're just living our best lives. Yeah. Because yeah. we, we, we were messaging each other about this the other day saying like, how could anyone not want to live in Newcastle like the way, the way we live at the moment you know we come to train it's five minutes we all go for brekkie it's five minutes away the beach is five minutes away we all live five minutes away it's just the best feeling ever eh? it is mate honestly the only only missing part to the puzzle is footy and that's just about to kick it's off just around yeah. the yeah. So like, this is probably the best the best I've ever felt in my life off the field with how happy I am yeah. and how balanced everything's going in my life and now I'm about to combine the two and have off field on field together and yeah. it's just such a good time mate it's yeah. so funny, man. Like you mentioned that, I sometimes because it's so good here, you take it for granted a little bit. Yeah. I was talking to Greg Marju out of the coffee machine. Yep. He just said to me, "How good is it? Like that's where we play." Yeah. yeah. Like just looking at the stadium, yeah. and I literally went, "Yeah, yeah, man. How good is that actually? Like coming from the Titans, where their training ground and everything they do, like, and the stadiums in Robina, which is a bit further yeah. inland, like they've got to travel to go to their stadium and their training ground and stuff." And he's come from there, and he's just like, "Well." That's where I train and that's where we play and, and you can see it like from here, like from the coffee machine. And I was like, you know what, you're so right. And you just, because you see it every day, it just doesn't, you know, someone that's coming from somewhere else, you just go, yeah, like how good is it? Like, yeah, it's a bit of a pinch me moment. Yeah, eh, when like, someone yeah. new comes yeah, in yeah, and they yeah. go, wow, this is good, eh? So yeah. good, so good. Hey, mate, look, round one is just in a, f you know, it's just around the corner, as you said. How looking forward to are uh, you putting on that jersey and, and debuting? Yeah, so much. I, I've always been someone that, like loves the community and wants to get involved in the community and you know there's different ways you can do that obviously Millie runs the trainer group programs and that's been a really good way for me to connect um you know a really special way for me to connect with the community and um but there's no better way than being in the sporting team that the town supports like especially being a one town club I know from coming here and playing previously how passionate the yeah. fans are I genuinely cannot wait to getting out there and play for the town and we've had a big focus around that in our pre-season that we're not just playing for ourselves or you know or our teammates is it's a, it's a big part of it but we're playing for the town and the people of Newcastle and you know I can't wait to get out there and do them proud but also to play with the blokes that I've 
come and I, I've done a lot of watching and like sitting back and observing since I've been here. Um, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to count your chickens before they count your chickens before they hatch. Yeah. But you know, to see the improvements that we've had in the preseason now that I'm just starting to fit back into the fold, really excited to play, and I think we're going to shock a lot of teams this year. I think round three, mate. Will be one of the best days of your life. I genuinely mean that because we play away the first two rounds, that right, Jay? Yeah, yep. and then round three we're home against the uh, against the Dolphins on a Friday night, I believe. Is it, Jimmy? Friday, Friday, Friday night. Friday. Yeah. yeah, it'll be the best moment of your life. You speak about coming here, and there's twenty five thousand, thirty thousand Roaring Knights fans. That's even more special running out playing for them, and a bloke like yourself who gets involved with the community and respects the town and the community. You'll feel the whole weight of them are behind it. So good. Can I just jump quickly into the trainer program that you and Mel have sort of started? Jay's been heavily involved in it, um, yeah, helping him with media side of things, and it's a great initiative what you and Mel are starting up, and especially Mill for someone so young. Um, I got involved last year. Can you just tell us a little bit about it, what it all is, and why did you guys start this program? Because I know that kind of stuff is special to both you and Mel. Well, your brother's... On, on, on all yeah. the um, all the folders and all that, right? It's yeah, him and Millie. He's, he's the he's Facebook with Mill, right? Mil, yeah, so that's so sick. Yeah. He um, he's pretty proud of that. Yeah, <laughs> it was actually a, such a good laugh. Um, t- I took those photos. So oh, did you? Yeah, they, they look good. Yeah, <laughs> mate. We've um, we've always had a thing, my brother. So he um, this is a little bit off topic, but he um, he used to get a bit not camera shy, but he just did this smile, mate, and like. <laughs> I can take the absolute mickey out of him because yeah. he's my brother. Yeah. So I had to start tickling him to get him to smile <laughs> properly in photos and yeah, making yeah. him laugh. So he's sitting in the, he's sitting in the apartment. I'm taking photos of him and Millie, and he wouldn't get it right. Wouldn't get it right. So I said, "Oh, big fellow, Ruby Rose." So half the photos we had to crop him out because he's tickling himself, <laughs> making himself laugh. <laughs> but back to back to how it all started. Yeah. So Millie's um, Millie's one of five. Yep. Um, the, she's got an older brother Morgan that plays in the NRL as well, but she's the older sister. Morgan moved away, um, you know, when he was quite young for rugby league. Moved to the Raiders um, from our small town. So, you know, Mill found herself, you know, being the older sister of four siblings, and I feel like she's got a lot of those characteristics. She said to us that she's pretty young, like she's so mature. And oh, so mature! Oh, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, got such like a caring, motherly nature about her. Hundred um, percent. You know, Mill could have five kids. Like people. Would, bump into her in the street and think she is a mother of five. Like yeah. she's she's just got that really friendly and caring nature about her and she's got a little sister, Hannah. So Hannah's, you know, the light of her life and her best friend and they love each other. The whole family um, have such a their own special f- friendship with Hannah and um, so she's got Down syndrome and then my older brother, James, has autism. Um, and it's been something that, you know, even as – as younger kids, me and Mill have always sort of bonded over the fact that, you know, from a very small community where there's not too many people with disabilities, intellectual disabilities, and um, it's been something that's always brought us together and something that we've always been really passionate about. Um, And she was looking for... She was just looking for a purpose in her life. She's someone that doesn't like doing things for the sake of a Mill. It's what I absolutely love about her. She could be getting paid really well doing something, but if she's not liking it, she'll just throw it away she she needs that purpose and passion in her life and you know this has it written all over it so the idea is that both Hannah and James they're they've finished high school and they're at that age bracket where you've gone from having support workers from you know say year seven onwards um a lot of people are in the same boat where you probably are part of a special unit at school yeah um you've got support workers you've even got probably brothers and sisters and siblings and friends of brothers and sisters and siblings that are keeping an eye out for you at school as well. You've got all your teachers, all the staff, especially being at Bega High School where they were, everyone knows everyone. Then you finish school and we all get thrown in the deep end a fair bit and it's like, this is the real world, do your best. But for someone with a disability that doesn't have the social skills, the people skills, um, the communication, um, the confidence, all these things that we probably take for granted and don't realise that we're we're born with just through coming through and, and having a fend for ourselves maybe a little bit more than what they do. Yep. So Mills Trainer Group Program, it's called the Game Changer Program. It's a six-week um, block, one day a week for two hours um, that focuses on an hour inside, which is around communication skills, um, goal setting, 
confidence, confidence, and all these all these sorts of things, mental health, um, and then an hour outside, which focuses on getting healthy, exercising, because we all know, especially us being around this environment, it's so important to have both. Yep. Um, so yeah, she started it last year and it was really successful. The feedback from all the participants and their families has been incredible. Um, so now she's they've they've just transferred it over to a non profit charity, a foundation, um, and they're just about to race. They're, they're in the process of scaling it, hopefully to something quite a bit bigger um, that can help more people and, and have a, a bit wider of a touch. You know, if we'd love to be able to reach rural New South Wales. Yep. Um, as our first port of call outside of the big city. So, yeah, and I've dragged that on a little bit there, but it's something that we're both no, really mate, passionate about. No, not about. at all. And, um, to, see, to see the boys from the club, yeah. like, mate, you you got involved last year before I even knew you. And for me, that was – I just get – I get immediate admiration and res- respect for someone that does that, Toots. And, you know, Jack John's come down with yeah. you last year and Clem big came Clem down. Clem brought his kids down. Like, yeah. That stuff's so special. It means a lot to the participants, but it means a hell of a lot to me and Millie. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's it's even more so this year. The boys are all coming oh, down mate, and lining in. up to come down. Yeah. So it's something that's really cool. No, I mean, a credit to your mill. It's 100%. awesome. You know, and, you know, we've been there a few times and just seeing their faces light up, just being in the room around you guys and oh. just interacting with you and, you know, if they're a bit shy or a bit, you know, they have that confidence and they get up and they say something about themselves that they're probably a bit guarded about and you boys are all there clapping them on and all that. You can just see, like, it just completely changes it's their demeanour and if they're a bit shy or a bit, you know, don't really know, by the end of it, they're kicking balls, they're running footies, yeah. they're chatting, they're high-fiving. Like, yeah. you can just see they're their whole demeanour. each other yeah, on. It's like they, mate, they, mate, Toots and Millie are growing their own little community of just better. It's incredible. Yeah, it's so, so good. So credit to you and Mill, mate. Look, we're going to take a quick break there. Uh, we'll be back uh, with ads. We're going to go on a little Insta deep dive after that. So that <laughs> should be fun. So we'll be back. This is Knights HQ. Welcome back to Knights HQ podcast brought to you by Maxwell Recruitment and Training. I'm Jay Nelson. I'm here with Matt Croker and we're here with Adam Elliott. Mate, we're going to get into your Instagram account. Is there anything on there that you wish you deleted before we had a look or? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm a dad now, so <laughs> everything's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> It's very G-rated. Every time I post yeah. something, I think, mm, yeah. let me goes up. If he sees this, is he going to be embarrassed? <laughs> so photo one should be on your screen now somewhere. So I'm, I'm going to be editing it, so yeah, we'll be there somewhere. Just a quick rundown of how this works. When we get guests in here, we have a look at their Instagram, we pull up some photos, and we talk about those moments. So Jay's got the first one. So, mate, we've got one here of you and Mill on grand final day after she won or the team won. Mate, talk to us about that moment and how special that was. Yeah, it was. It was, it was very emotional. Um, I, I got a lot more emotional than I thought I would. Um, <laughs> Millie coming down to Newcastle was massive. She'd played – she'd lived on the Gold Coast for – you know, six years, her whole family was up there. She'd commuted to the Broncos, which just made sense. Um, they were in the, they were one of the first teams in the comp and, um, you know, she was a very large part of the team's success and Mill being Mill had developed like some some sisters up there. They weren't friends. They were, they were really tight from a, from the point of, I'd say like, like an NRL team where we spend all year together. Yeah, we get yeah. really tight. Those girls only spent, you know, two months together but they were very very close so it was hard for her to come down here and without going into the details she copped a fair bit of flack for it and I was almost a bit I was a, I was nervous for it. I was a lot more nervous than Millie was because I knew she needed to perform there's a lot of media attention around it and I just put myself in her shoes and thought far out like if I had that pressure on me I, I'd, I'd it'd be hard to block out um, but she did and she absolutely carved up and played played up to her standard and whatever unexpected of her and they ended up winning the grand final coming from a team that didn't win a game yeah. the year before yeah. to, you know, just showing so much ticker yeah. and so much in Newcastle, like that blue collar hard yeah. work. They yeah. didn't win because they were flash, mate. They won because they were tough yeah. and she'd been talking about it and Ronnie Griffiths <laughs> and Mill went on a pretty special journey together and bringing the girls along and yeah. um, there's a lot of a lot of really good memories from that season, but especially when they won and, um, yeah, getting her up on my shoulders in the crowd was well, pretty, pretty special. <laughs> I was going to say, how were your shoulders by the end of that? Because I swear, every time I looked, Millie's on your shoulders, then Tamika was on your shoulders, <laughs> then Romy was on your shoulders. Like, just everyone had a go. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, I couldn't feel much of my shoulders. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> two days later. Yeah. <laughs> Who went harder on the on the celebrations, you or Mill? Uh, mate, Millie did, yeah. to her credit. Yeah, yeah so... Jay was um, thereabouts too, just quietly. Yeah, yeah, just quietly. <laughs> so, long story short, we've um, we've cut the night 
cut the night, me and Miller heading home, getting ready for bed, and um, just about to hop in the shower, and the front door gets kicked in, and one of the girls had put her, ins- her um, our address in the, in the <laughs> girls' WhatsApp, WhatsApp <laughs> and yeah, those 20 year old W players in the house, <laughs> along with a really good looking media manager <laughs> who's sitting beside me right and now. And another really good front row from the Knights, I believe, Daniel yeah, Safini. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was just there supporting the team, mate. That's all he was doing. So. Hey, we're one club, mate. We're a big family. That's right. <laughs> all right, mate. Second photo is um, on your journey to Newcastle. You've grown fond of a few blokes and it's called a little Sunrise Club. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so the Sunrise crew, I um, come in one day and ask Kobe Rugford what um, – Ruggler, so what um what Braddy was doing because they're roomies and I, where was he and he said oh he's down down the beach he goes down most mornings and watches the sunrise and has a coffee it's probably been best like I almost had to have a second take and yeah. I couldn't believe that he was doing it and you know that's something that I love doing getting up early winning the day and sort of I've always you know had the idea of if you start the morning like that you can't have a crap day so I uh, hit Braddy up and and we started going and then Jackson Hastings obviously come to the come to the club and come to the team and um, Jacko and me and Brady sort of hit it off pretty quickly and um, me and Brady have to pick him up and take him to a training every <laughs> yeah. day so he doesn't really get <laughs> much of a say in, in the Sunrise crew so he's down there with us as well and it's just something that we do you know most mornings and um, it's something that we're really enjoying yeah. Well yeah we've uh, actually we're talking about Level Up before croaks about the pre-season our next episode for Level Up will be following around Adam so we did a bit of a shoot for the, with the Sunrise crew, so it was uh, it was a good laugh. It was yeah, good stay stuff. Tuned, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a lot of energy going laugh. around Brabham yeah. Best at five in the morning. I'll tell you <laughs> oh, what, man. Oh, I reckon Jacko Hastings <laughs> wouldn't be far off either. <laughs> yeah. All right, mate. As we um, as we do when we have a guest on here, we put out to Instagram. We ask for their fan questions. Uh, so this is the last little bit of the podcast, mate. It's been real fun. First question is from at Millie Boyle. She asks, "What is your most annoying habit?" I really wish I would have messaged Mill. And asked her I kind of feel like, yeah, she's going to yeah. send us her own list, oh, right? No, yeah. I already know what, what it would be, 100% what she would say. And I probably, I don't find it annoying because it's, I don't, I don't have to put up with it, but I just cannot multitask, mate. Uh. If I'm doing something, she could be asking, she'd ask me 15 times if I'm writing a text message or reading a book or doing something, I just can't. I just completely black out and I yeah. don't remember. Yeah, so that's, Mill would say that's my most annoying habit. Okay. Right, next, we've got from at Kingstagram91. Best coffee in Newey, and well, this actually, man knows his coffee. Yeah, right. We're actually got a we've got a bit of a ramble with you, with you and Tyson when we went down to Channel Nine and we started talking about the boys' coffees orders. Yeah, it literally went for like twenty minutes because <laughs> he knew everyone's coffee order and what he gets. You're you're a coffee connoisseur. Yeah, I am. I'm a bit of a coffee con- a bit of a coffee snob to be yeah. honest. I've uh, got the coffee machine at home and yeah. um, sort of bounce around a different a couple of different places where we get the beans from. <sighs> you know, spot. You can't beat beat Blue Door for a morning coffee watching the sunrise. But as for coffee, Frother's Espresso across from the Prince Hotel on um, City Road there yep. is probably the best drop I've had. There you go. Um, yeah, black coffee, beautiful. There you go. Frother's. Lovely. Lovely. I've never, I don't even know if I've been there. Mm. All right, mate. Sleep last up. one from a young fella named – or a young boy or girl named At Cooper B – Oh seven. What's the what's your advice for making the NRL or even high level football? Yeah, big question. I'd say first of all, you've got to absolutely love it. You can't go through everything that we have to go through unless you love it and you know what's at the the light at the end of the tunnel is the fact that you get to turn up every day and play with great blokes and play the game that you love. So first and foremost, you've got to make sure you're passionate about it and you love it because you can't be dipping your toe. And secondly, it it's all comes down to hard work. You know, these two, it's me and you are pretty similar players, yep. I think. Like my whole career has been based on hard work, re- turning up, being fit, being there when, you know, when the boys need you. Uh, and you can't do that unless you're willing to work hard and, um, you know, without sort of going on and on about things. I remember being... I would probably. I was in. I was in year eight at, at high school, and you know, got to the point where all my mates sort of started partying, and and you know, we're a coasty little town. It's a pretty loose little town, Tartar. So, yep. you know, you can find yourself getting up to some mischief. And I used to. I used to get up at six o'clock every day, and I'd have two different runs that I'd do. One was either through the bush. It was sort of like a big road run, uh, and then the next day I'd be going to the oval and I'd be doing sprints. And to be honest, I probably had absolutely no idea what I was doing, like from a sports science point of view. But I think the fact that I would get up, 
I was 14 years old, 13 years old, but I would wake up at five to six and be at the front door with my runners on at six o'clock. Yep. And it's like that discipline of like repetitiveness, consistency. Yep. Yep. I think that probably built just it just set the tone for me moving forward and gave me the the discipline that it takes to sort of make the NRL. Yeah. Yeah, great advice, mate. Great advice. Well look, that's us. Mate, thanks, thanks. so much yeah. for coming in. Hey. Great yarn, great yeah. yarn. We talked about some good stuff. We know it's obviously a training day, so coming in and, and doing this before you got to train, mate, we really, really appreciate it. So thanks, thanks for coming in. Uh, mate, look, you can subscribe and leave a review on Apple, <laughs> Spotify, and anywhere you get your podcasts. We're also on YouTube. So this will be on YouTube. You can subscribe to our channel. Uh, want to hit the bells, get notifications, all that sort of stuff, and you'll be notified when a new video drops. There's also plenty happening around Knights HQ, Season 3. We're now weekly, so the best way to stay up to date is on the club's website and through our social media channels. So all of our social media channels is at NRL Knights, so make sure you drop us a follow. We'd also like to thank Maxwell Recruitment and Training for bringing you this episode of the pod. Croaks, you're the man. Thanks, Jay. Adzi, uh, thank thanks you, again. Torts. Thanks, everyone. We'll see Enjoy. you on the next one. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Legends. Legends. Cheers, mate.